Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kelsey Lefevre. I'm a wedding and elopement photographer based in Indiana, and I make videos to share some of my favorite editing tips for those other folks who are really into these warm, moody images and help you learn exactly how to achieve that with your own photos. What I wanted to talk about today is an issue that we run into a lot, especially when you don't have a ton of control over the lighting in your sessions, and that is how to edit images that are really hazy and backlit. So these photos that I have here up on the screen in Lightroom are from a recent engagement session, which I absolutely loved. This was the most fun couple. These images that are here highlighted in green are photos that I've already edited from other times during the session. And as you can see, these images were not backlit. So my goal is to end up with these hazy images down here, which are highlighted blue, looking like they belong with these other images. And that can be sometimes a hard task to achieve when you're starting with photos that look so much fundamentally different. These are three of my favorite photos from other times during the session, either in the shade or once the sun had gone down a little bit and just given us a little bit of forgiveness there in terms of the lighting. So moving to our hazy images. I think the first step in making hazy images like this work and you absolutely should make them work because they look awesome. They're really dreamy. There's no reason to look at photos like this and think, oh, it's terrible. There's something wrong with it. We shouldn't shoot like this because it is a matter of style. And I think that these images can turn out so dreamy and so beautiful if you just adjust your settings exactly the right way. I'm going to edit this one here step by step with you. And then I'll do a bit of a speed edit through the next three and talk a little bit more about my process there at the end. So this is the first image I'm going to be looking at. I really liked this one because I love how glowy this field looks. I love these light flares that are appearing here in the image, which happens often when you're shooting directly into the sun. My style is pretty candid. It's kind of filmy and that works with everything that I love shooting. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and hop into develop mode over here. I have all my favorite presets along the left side. My naming system for presets is a little bit funny. You'll probably realize that really quickly with my videos, but I name my presets after the clients that I originally was editing when I created that preset. So my favorite ones right now are the Rachel series and specifically Rachel Jessica Chill is my favorite preset at the moment. And I rename each new version of my preset as I've tweaked it um, just to make sure that I have that saved and I can keep using it again. Right now, this preset is the one that I've been using on all my images. I think it works in quite a variety of lighting situations. We just have to tweak things a little bit to make it look nice on these hazy photos too. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this preset to this first photo that we're gonna be working on. And right off the bat, the issues that I see with this image are that it's looking a little bluish for my taste and also the whole thing is just kind of washed out. We're not seeing any true shadows and blacks here. And that's evident in the histogram over here on the right hand side as well. There's just not much at this end, but we've got a whole lot of highlights. The first thing I'm going to do is scroll down to the dehaze slider on the right side of develop. My preset that I use has a little bit of dehaze applied automatically, but I want to add even more to really power through the haziness that we get here in this image. I'm going to go ahead and crank it up to maybe 22. And it's made a little bit of a difference so far, and that's exactly what I want it to do. I don't want the dehaze to be doing all of the work by itself because I want to preserve the natural look of the image at the same time. I'm also going to up our contrast just a little bit and make sure that we really get some darker tones back in here. And then I'm also going to pull our exposure down because it's still too bright for my tastes. Perfect. And so now the last problem that I'm really left with is that this image is still too blue for me. I'm pretty happy with the shadows that we're seeing, especially in here now, and that's pretty evident in histogram. It's a little better balanced at this end now. I'm gonna go ahead and bring up our warmth by dragging the temp slider over here up just a little bit. And it's a little green as well, so I'm gonna drag our tint up just a little bit too. And I'm pretty happy with how this is looking at the moment. Something that I'm noticing is their heads are still a lot brighter and have a lot less contrast than this area down at the bottom of the image. So I want to adjust that as well. We're going to go ahead into the brush tool, which is one of my favorite features of Lightroom. It just lets you paint specific settings only on certain areas instead of on the whole image. And that's great for messing with just the little parts of an image. 
we're going to go ahead and just start with a blank brush here so that there are no settings already on it. And I'm going to drag our dehaze tool up to maybe 13. And we can always adjust it after we paint it on if we think that it's maybe too much or not quite enough. So we're going to paint this dehaze right here over their faces. Perfect. And it's just going to make them pop just a little bit more up top. And I think that that looks really nice. Depending on the result that I'm going for, I might add a little bit of contrast too, just to give them even more pop. And I'm pretty happy with that. I think that this really gives a nice dreamy feel. It's preserving these cool lens flares. It really feels kind of fairy tale -y to be sitting in a field exactly like this. I want to also compare this to the original photo, which you see here on the left side. And we've achieved adding some more true blacks back into this image, bringing our shadows down, making our clients pop even more. And something that has also come across in this process with my own preset, keeping the highlights a little bit darker than the original image is we have kept this whole sky from being blown out too. So we see some more cool just fade from the light coming in. And I think it looks really vintage and nice. And as you can see, this also looks pretty good with the photos that I already have edited. It looks like it can belong in the same series. It's never going to be identical style-wise simply because of the difference in the angle of light and contrast. But these look like they belong in the same gallery and I think it's a really cool piece of the story. I'm gonna do a speed edit through the next three and I'll jump in and talk a little bit about what I do to each image as I'm editing that. So with this photo specifically, I haven't done a ton of tweaking past what I showed you in the first photo either. I applied my preset that I always start with. I went ahead and brought up the dehaze and I brought up the contrast and I also made it warmer. And I think that that has done a great job of really achieving exactly the look that I was going for and also looking like it goes with the other images in this series as well. Something that I really like about this image is this kind of fairy tale dreamy haziness that we get coming from the sun. Um, just over here beyond the trees. We also see these really cool little specks over here that look like they're glowing. I know those are just bugs, but I think they look kind of dreamy and cool too. I also really like that we have this light glow around them from the sun too, and that's something I really wanted to preserve as well. And I think we have just a nice summery forest image that they're going to love. Right. And with this image in particular, I just did a little bit more work. Once again, I started with the same process as always with my preset that I always use. Up my dehaze, I up my warmth, I up my contrast. And with this one, I had to do especially a lot of dehazing just because this photo that we started with, as you can see along the left hand side here, was a lot hazier. It's super just kind of gray and mushy here in the shadows and I wanted to make sure that we bring that contrast back. So I brought the dehaze up a lot and I brought the contrast up a lot to really get these blacks and this nice contrast over here back in the photo. Something else that I did with this one in particular is brush dehaze over their faces again just to make sure that we really see them popping. I also added a little bit of contrast to their faces and I also brought up the exposure on their faces just a little bit too because when I added that dehaze brush it made them a little bit darker and I wanted to be true to their skin here in this particular image. I think that this is a really cool shot too. I love these light flares that are peering off to the side. I think it's a really great touch to the image. All right, and here's our final image. Most of the haziness in this is confined to his head and shoulder right here with the sun coming right behind them. And I'm pretty happy again with my basic adjustments here. I haven't done any brush work so far, but the one final step I am going to take that's something different than the other edits that I've done so far is I am noticing a little bit of a purple tint here in her dress. And that's just because of the pattern itself. Um, it looks really similar to chromatic aberration. So when I'm further zoomed out, I just kind of see some purpliness and I think that's a little bit distracting. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and scroll down to our HSL sliders here on the right-hand side of Lightroom in develop mode. And I'm going to bring the saturation of the purple way down and I probably will do it to the magenta as well. 
So now you're ending up with a dress that is much more truly black and white, and I think it's less distracting that way. We really just get to focus on this cute little twirl, the sun that's behind them, and their wedding venue there in the background. So when we compare this photo to the original, I'm pretty happy with this really pretty warmth that we have, and I think that it just looks really dreamy. I keep using words dreamy and fairy tale, but that's really what I like so much about this light. Pretty happy with how that has turned out on the whole. So as you can see, it really doesn't take a ton of effort and tweaks to get these hazy backlit photos to really look like they pop, to bring your clients back out of them, and to end up with these really pretty images that they will love for years to come. Let me know what questions you have in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss my next editing video, and I will see you next time.